With the recent release of Kirby and the Forgotten Land, I thought I'd take a look back at the other Kirby game released for Switch and see how they compare. The general consensus is that Star Allies is kinda... and Forgotten Land is kinda... But I wanted to see if the scores are correct and Forgotten Land is actually way better if we were all so enamored by 3D that we just assumed it was better. Spoiler alert, you won't be surprised by what I have to say about it. Yada yada, this is my opinion. If you prefer a different one than me, that's fine. This is also just kind of a review of both games. Also, these are both $60, so it's a fair comparison, and they're both platformers. Also, spoiler alert, duh, I'm going to be talking about the final bosses, and I'm assuming you have at least some prior knowledge of both games. I'm not going to be redundant and recite the whole plot last note. I absolutely like both games, okay? I figured I should start with something easy and not too controversial. Both of these games have some of the most unnecessarily best soundtracks in gaming, as Kirby games tend to do. Like seriously, listen to the truck segment from Forgotten Land. They made it a remix of the Invincibility theme, which is just absolutely amazing. Both soundtracks go for a different feel. Forgotten Land has a natural theme for most of its tracks because, well, the whole game goes for that theme. Star Allies, on the other hand, while there are a lot of new tracks, most of the game uses songs from past games, and that makes up a very large portion of the soundtrack. In particular, it uses green greens in like half the songs. Seriously, you will be hearing it everywhere. While yes, it is a classic theme, and Star Allies is presented as a celebration of Kirby, Overall, I prefer Forgotten Land for having more new tracks that also stick out and I remembered better after playing. Alive Little Mall, Downtown Grassland, Full Speed Farewell, and Versus a Dangerous Beast, just to name a few. So I'd say Forgotten Land wins in this category for having more of its own identity with its songs. Let me get this out of the way. Both of these games are gorgeous, being Kirby's first HD games. You don't count. Let's start with specs. These games are pretty much the same in that department. They both run at 30 frames per second and 1080p. However, I feel like Forgotten Land in general looks a bit smoother in the graphics department. There were a few more noticeable jacket edges than I would have preferred in Star Allies. Although that stuff doesn't really matter. The only real graphical disappointment comes from the fact that Star Allies could have run at 60 frames. I mean, the game's own menus do. It's a bit more reasonable for Forgotten Land to do 30 since there's a lot more on screen at once, being a 3D game. Believe me, I am the last person to care about frame rate, but it is something that should be brought up. The only real graphical issue in Forgotten Land is that some enemies move at a lower frame rate far away and you can definitely see it. Now for the actually important part, how the game actually looks in its theming. Forgotten Land has the post-apocalypse natural theme in every level whereas Star Allies goes all over the place. Neither is objectively better, but I definitely prefer Forgotten Land for having an actual theme, as Star Allies is the second game in modern Kirby to just be all over the place, the other being Return to Dreamland. So all in all, I give this to Forgotten Land. However, this really shouldn't impact your purchasing decision, assuming you don't own them already. Since these are both $60 games, it makes sense that they would both have a similar amount of content, and they do. I got a pretty similar amount of playtime from both of them. In fact, I'd say Star Allies was longer. Forgotten Land has 6 main worlds that have 4 main levels each, except the last one which has 5, a boss fight, and a ton of treasure road stages. All in all, the game only has 25 main levels, 26 if you count the tutorial. That's actually not that much. However, the levels themselves are absolutely longer than the ones in Star Allies, with much more to do in them. The value in these levels also comes from the fact that you will probably end up replaying a lot of them to find hidden Waddle Dees. And the levels themselves are really only half the game. There is so much side content, I think there's actually more of it than main content. There's so many treasure roads, I think there's like 60 of them. Three mini games that actually can be quite challenging, the Colosseum, and after you beat the game a ton of things are unlocked. You can upgrade your abilities to make them stronger, and you unlock Forgo Dreams, this game's Hero in Another Dimension guest star mode, which we'll talk about later. Now that sounds like a lot, but truthfully it doesn't end up taking that long to complete or even 100%. 
you could realistically do it in 20 hours on your first playthrough, which I did. Now let's compare that to Star Allies. Star Allies has only 4 worlds, but each has a wildly different amount of levels. It's worth mentioning that the first world only has like 4 levels, but the last one has over 15. Overall, Star Allies actually has more levels than Forgotten Land, but there's less to do in them. The only collectibles in those levels are one big puzzle piece in a level, and a big switch in certain levels which unlocks extra stages, compared to the upwards of 11 Waddle Dees you can find in Forgotten Land per level. I'd say the main campaigns have a similar amount of content, so let's go over to the side content in Star Allies and see how it compares. It has two mini games, which are so short and don't get you anything in the main game from playing them, they're not even worth talking about. There's also the ultimate choice, which is the exact same as the Colosseum being a boss rush, and every Kirby game has these. The game also has guest star mode, where you play a short version of the main game with any ally or dream friend from the main game. Pretty much every Kirby game has this, and for the most part, it's nothing too special. However, it is worth noting that every dream friend has some unique levels specially made for them, and the final boss of this mode? Oh boy. You really can get a lot out of this mode if you want to play all the unique levels, but most people will probably only want to play this once. Now I've been saving the best for last, Heroes in Another Dimension. This is a huge expansion that takes place after the main story mode. It's only 4 levels, but each of them take a while, probably over half an hour, and they're pretty tough compared to the rest of the game. You basically swap between abilities and dream friends to complete a bunch of mini challenges. You can collect friend hearts here, and oh boy, there are a ton of them. This easily adds more hours to your total playtime. Altogether, I'd say Star Allies took me about 30 hours to 100%, and keep in mind you can miss a lot and still get 100%. You can miss a lot of the friend hearts and heroes in another dimension, you only have to play guest star mode once, and you don't have to beat the final boss rush to get an 100% save file. However, the reason you don't have to do these things does undermine a lot of what I said. Let's address the elephant in the room here. Star Allies did not have all of this at launch. Heroes in another dimension and most of the dream friends were added after the game released. While yes, Star Allies now has more content, at launch it was extremely short. Now, adding more content to a game, especially when it's free, is not a bad thing. But when the game launches pretty unfinished, it doesn't go over well, especially when the asking price is $60. Despite all that, in the game's current state I'd say Star Allies beats Forgotten Land in terms of playtime and amount of content. One last thing I purposely neglected to mention is figurines and puzzle pieces. Both of these gives you small little things to look at, have no effect on gameplay, and are only kind of required for 100%. Don't let these factor into your purchase. I decided to save gameplay for last because it's easily the most important one. All that other stuff falls apart if the moment to moment gameplay isn't enjoyable, and yeah, one of these games is way less enjoyable than the other, at least for me. The obvious difference in gameplay is that Forgotten Land is 3D and Star Allies is 2D. They're both platformers and whether or not you prefer 2D or 3D platformers is entirely opinion. Personally, I prefer 3D platformers. Another difference in the games is their main mechanic. Every Kirby game has that one unique gameplay changer that shows up constantly. Return had super abilities, Triple Deluxe had Hypernova, and Robobot had the robot armor. Star Allies has the power of friendship, and Forgotten Land has mouthful mode. Basically, in Star Allies you can use your infinite supply of friend hearts to make enemies your allies, which can then help you clear levels, and you can also combine some abilities. Mouthful mode lets you take control of real life objects you find, like cars and traffic cones. Mouthful mode is great because each one has a ton of variety in puzzles and situations they're used in. Like, they get really creative with these, especially in Forgo Dreams. There really aren't any bad ones, and it's a great mechanic that feels like an addition to Kirby's arsenal of abilities. Star Allies mechanic sucks. Okay, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I and many others think the game would be better without it unlike Mouthful Mode, which improves the game. 
For starters, you have to switch allies all the time to solve puzzles, and the way you do it feels more like inventory management than a game. I had more fun playing the game when I didn't have one. Unfortunately, they are required a ton, and at random points too, like a door you just can't open without four people. The level designs are also very toned down from what they used to be to make sure allies don't get lost. Possibly worst of all is how they affect bosses. I didn't feel like a single boss in this game was both challenging and fair. Most bosses, if you have allies, go down in seconds without you even doing anything, and if you do them in single player, they're usually boring. Now, the extra games do have very challenging bosses, even with allies, but it's not because they have attack patterns that are tough to avoid, or they have a certain weakness that's hard to find. It's because you literally cannot see what you're doing, to counteract the fact that there are four of you. These bosses' attacks cover 99% of the screen, which in addition to the four playable characters on screen, makes it so you can't tell where you are. Seriously, try to find Kirby in this mess. It makes it even harder to keep track of your health. And a lot of these bosses do an insane amount of damage. The story bosses aren't challenging, and the late bosses aren't fair, because the game's main mechanic makes it impossible to design good bosses around. This is disappointing because the game has great ideas. The allies are sometimes used in interesting ways, like with ability combos. However, most of the levels and bosses are dragged down by the game's own main mechanic. Now, so far I've only been talking about the single player for both of these games. And since Star Allies was clearly made for multiplayer, I figured it wouldn't be fair if I didn't try it. Let's start with Forgotten Land. In that game, Player 2 can play as Bandana D who has his own spear moveset. It's actually pretty great. The levels were made with a second player in mind, but it doesn't detract from the single player. Having more space to run around in is also great. The only complaints I have are that Bandana D can't use mouthful mode, which kinda stinks, but since most of the levels don't have too many mouthful mode segments, it never got that annoying. Star Allies, on the other hand, has multiplayer at its core. So it's a real shame that it's pretty terrible. Okay, I know I'm in the minority here, but I found a multiplayer in Star Allies more of a hassle than it's worth. There are just so many confusing things about it. Like, other people can't join until Player 1 has recruited allies. They're just sitting there until that happens. Why they can't play as their own Kirby boggles me, especially when Return to Dreamland offered that as an option. Once again, the there is so much on screen I have no idea what I'm doing issue is even worse in multiplayer because now more people can't tell what's going on. I had way more fun playing with someone else in Forgotten Land than in Star Allies. And I also had more fun in multiplayer in Return to Dreamland than Star Allies, and that wasn't even the game's main focus. This is a real shame too because when you look at Kirby, well of course it looks like an easy game to get into and have fun with someone else. But for Star Allies, that's not really true. For most of this discussion, I've held a pretty neutral view on both games. I definitely preferred Forgotten Land, but I understood that Star Allies did do some things better, and probably had more stuff to do in it. However, I can't honestly recommend Star Allies over Forgotten Land, because Forgotten Land is simply more fun to play. It does more for the series and is overall more creative. The main mechanic is loads better and it's a great multiplayer game. Forgotten Land is easily the better game. However, I do want to say that despite all the negativity towards Star Allies, I do still like it. Whenever I play it, I'm still having fun and if you can find it for cheap, you should totally get it. If nothing else, get it for buff DDD, never mind Star Allies is the better game.